Hi, Lasagna Club. We're in my, uh, my chef's gear today. We're about to jump into service, but I wanted to share a little bit of a longer video than we would normally share for Lasagna Club. So we're gonna talk about the Chateau de la Sujol Malabar 2018 from Gérard Bertrand. Um, and so there'll be a few parts to this video, but uh, let me start by just saying that some of you wanted a little tutorial in opening a bottle of wine. Um, so let me show you how to use a two-step wine opener. So the first thing that we do is we're always going to cut below the lip of the bottle. It just creates a nice foil cut and it gives us a little bit of leverage when we're pushing in to the edge. And then we just pull up and then cross and the foil should just lift off and you should have a nice clean cut underneath the lip. And then we're going to take our screw or worm and then that is going to go pointy end in and then we'll straighten it out. And we're going to take the opener and we're just going to screw into the end of the final level of the coil there. So you can see there's still a little swirl. And then finally, the first, we push in on the first lever and then we lift up straight up and down, trying to keep the cork always vertical so that we're not bending or, or risking to snap it. And then finally, the last piece comes in and then we're just going to lift the cork out. Now, I usually stop right here, and this is where I undo my opener. And then that goes back into my pocket, like so. And then the last little step of the wine, we just take the cork off. And so that is how we use a two-step opener, always keeping the cork straight up and down. And the two-step helps do that, so it eliminates any bending or breaking of the soft little spots in the cork. Uh, Gérard Bertrand, Chateau de la Sujol. So uh, in order to qualify for the Malapair appellation, uh, it has to be a minimum of 40% Merlot, uh, which this one uh, has. Uh, and then the balance in this wine is made up of Cabernet Franc and a little bit of Malbec, but in the south we call Malbec Cote, like the C-O-T. Uh, the, the flavor on this wine, obviously, like this is a, a beautiful wine from the south of France. All those really rich, ripe black and red flavors, ripe black plum, black raspberry, black cherry. There's a beautiful spice element to this wine too because the wine is aged in new French barrique. So uh, th these are barrels, 225 liters, new French oak from uh, local oak forests. And, uh, and yeah, these are like well toasted to like a medium plus to give that really kind of vanilla toasty quality that only French oak can give. Uh, where this wine starts to diverge from a regular wine though, is uh, this wine is made using biodynamic wine principles. Uh, so biodynamics are, you know, it's, it's sort of like the religion of winemaking. Uh, you, have to, you have to kind of buy into it a little bit for sure, both from like someone that believes in biodynamics uh, and someone that uses it in the vineyard. Uh, it's, it's a very special way of making wine that sort of takes into account something beyond the winemaking principles. It really talks about the holistic, uh, interactions between soil and plant and man and animal, the environment, going all the way from uh, the bottom of the roots of the plant to the moon. Um, so Rudolf Steiner, uh, he's an Austrian scientist, uh, really kind of spearheaded this movement in the 1920s. He gave a series of lectures, uh, basically outlining that he thought that synthetic uh, farming was going to ruin farmland. Uh, and you can Take whatever stance on that that you want. Uh, but this, the simple truth is that in order to qualify for biodynamic winemaking, you have to imagine farming as kind of like a closed system with no inputs from outside. So you're not allowed herbicides, you're not allowed pesticides, uh, watering is pretty limited but is permitted because water is in the environment already. Uh, and you follow a very specific calendar as well, <clears throat> which divides uh, every day into a fruit day, a root day, a uh, leaf day or a flower day, and based on what day it is, that would be a good day to plant seeds, or that would be a good day to prune your crops, or that would be a good day to uh, to water. Um, but yeah, it's 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 like the very basics. So the your ticket to the dance for biodynamics is you have to be at bare minimum an organic farm, and then from there, you know the 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 scale really goes up. Uh, to, to be certified biodynamic is a seven year process. Well, I mean, depending on who's certifying you, but uh, I mean, the, the main sort of uh, North American and European bodies, you're gonna see a label, it says uh, Demeter on the label. Uh, it's like a green kind of logo, D-E-M-E-T-E-R. 
Um, and and if, so if you're certified by them, then it's a seven year process in order to get to get that done. But uh, but yeah, it it it's one of those things that you know as you kind of go through winemaking and farming in general, you do like if you're touring vineyards uh, that are mechanically and synthetically farmed, they have a specific look to them, and some of them are very very pretty. Uh, when you go through bio biodynamic vineyards and through biodynamic farms, they have a different feel, they have a different smell, they have a different energy. The, the earth is kind of wild and, and yeah, like there's all kinds of plants growing where you think they shouldn't. And, and that's literally because all this, all this plant material ends up getting used in like active composts. Uh, a lot of plants get dehydrated or fermented uh, into sprays that then get used back into the vineyard. Uh, you know, like the, it, it's a very full on way of farming uh, with the ultimate goal, of course, of A, returning the, the soil to its natural health and B, making sure that the, the energy from the earth is given fully to the plants uh, that it sustains uh, and and vis-a-vis -vis the, the grapes into the wine. It also uh, doesn't allow any inputs in the winemaking. So uh, you're, you're not allowed to use sulfur, uh, no like adulterants whatsoever. I mean, a lot of winemakers will achieve uh, really balanced blends as a result of biodynamic winemaking because rather than uh, adulterating one single uh, varietal, they might blend it with another one. Yeah, it's uh, overall biodynamic winemaking is one of those things that, you know, you know in your heart is probably the right way to farm, uh, but do you have the, the wherewithal to do that? And, uh, and so the more farmers are connected with their land, uh, the more, you know, they really feel these principles, these biodynamic winemaking principles. And, and yeah, there's just no doubt about the, the fact that the quality of wine coming from biodynamic vineyards is almost indisputable in, it, in its high quality. It's a beautiful way of making wine. Uh, it usually leads to a beautiful result in the glass and you can feel really good about drinking it because it takes a really beautiful person to, to farm biodynamically as well. So yeah, I could continue talking about this for some time, but uh, we'll just kind of cut that one short there. Uh, Chateau de la Soujol has been farmed biodynamically since 2013, uh, a large plot of land in, uh, in the Languedoc, uh, just uh, near Carcassonne. Uh, in the south of France. So you can imagine what those hillsides look like. Honestly, uh, Gerard Bertrand farms these vineyards, uh, like he tills them with a horse and plow. That's how committed he is to, uh, to like that idea of the entire system. Uh, no, no, in, no inputs whatsoever. Everything on the land comes from the land, behaves with the land, like all in perfect harmony. And I mean, that's something that's pretty easy just to get behind. So uh, enjoy the wine and know that, uh, you know, the guy that's uh, making this wine is trying to make a really positive impact on his vineyards and in viticulture in the South of France. And uh, cheers to that. Thank you.